Sarah James. So congratulations on Thank the you. film. Now, One Life has this stellar cast led by Sir Anthony Hopkins. Can you tell me about the first meeting you had with him about the project and any sort of reservations maybe he might have had? Well, I went to uh, see Tony, as he wants to be called, in L.A., um, it was still the end of the pandemic, so we were we chose an outdoor restaurant and were sitting at a bit of a distance. Um, it's supposed to be an hour and a half. Um, three and a half hours later, we were still going. Um, we we talked about a lot of things. It went obviously we started on the story and what he wanted it to be and what he felt. He obviously to have the meeting, he was already drawn to the character to the script, um, and we had to find a way that we both intended the film to feel to smell at the end of it. And we both had this word, restraint, that there was so much emotion in the story. We didn't want to over-sugar it. We didn't, I didn't imagine endless sweeping strings. I didn't imagine him breaking down to his knees in, in fits of melodrama. And we knew that we wanted the same honesty to it. So that, that, was, that was the connection. And there was a BBC connection too. Um, I grew up at the BBC. He talks incredibly fondly of early days making plays at the at the BBC. So going back to Television Centre, sensing that bit of history in the story and in our careers was another real bond. Now, talking about the BBC, uh, you've recreated the famous That's Life scene for it. Now, in that scene, you've got uh, Nicholas surrounded by the survivors. Mm. And I understand you've actually used the real-life survivors from the film. How did that come about? Was it easy to persuade them to get involved? Once Nicky's story and his role in saving the children from Prague became public, a lot of the survivors gravitated towards him. I mean, you know that from the second episode of That's Life, but then thereafter, and they called themselves Nicky's children. So they were there and connected and have been, and their children and grandchildren are already. So it's a real international community. So we knew where to find them. And one of the producers had this idea that when you have that iconic moment of Esther Ranson saying, anybody here owe their life to Nicholas Winton, please stand, to have that audience really mean it. And uh, they flew in from Canada, from Israel, from Italy, um, from all over the world, from Australia, um, to be part of their family's history and to recreate it again. So incredibly powerful in the studio on that day. Every, every member of crew was crying. You could not hold it back. I, I was just going to say, I can imagine that must have been an incredibly emotional yeah, set yeah, of I, shock. I could barely see the monitor through my own is I'm you know cr crying is part of the director's toolkit it's the emotion I always try and justify um, but that was on another scale so this was a relatively short shoot from what I understand 30 odd days or so um, shot in two countries two time periods two crews all speaking different languages um, could it have been any more difficult <laughs> Thank you for understanding. Um, no, it was brutal, and partly because the ambition of the film and the scale of the film. You, you can't tell this story just in the living room. Um, we needed the station, we needed the refugee camp, and there was a very literal limit to how deep we could make that camp, how many people we could use in the population in those, in those bigger places. Um, and we were given 12 hours on Prague Station platform for two days, so 24 hours, shooting hours. It takes a while to back up a steam train and reset it on its marks. It takes a while to get those children into a performance place where they're going to feel real in, in the moment. So, yeah, it was challenging. Now, also, you've got Johnny Flynn playing uh, Sir Anthony as a younger man. How does he correlate his performance um, with what Sir Anthony has done, you know, having, you know, as they are the same character? Both actors studied newsreel and whatever footage, and there was quite a bit of footage of older Nicky out there, much less of younger Nicky. Um, uh, both then spoke together, channeled through me, and then we filmed Sir Anthony's sections first, his first 15 days. So uh, Johnny came to the set and met with him, watched him at work, watched the way he was, little details, like when he gets stressed, he moves his glasses in a particular way, so Johnny would adopt that. Um, uh, Sir Nicholas had a way of um, slightly st staggering his way into a sentence, into a speech that Tony decided was a good thing to adopt. So Johnny did too. Um, they both have a slightly lazy eye effect. We did that because then on their faces I found a better transition between the time periods that could be very focused and not too hands-off. So we found ways. It was huge collaboration. 
Now, you've got an extensive uh, background of directing. You've been directing for 30-odd years or so. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and you've got so many uh, pr- high-profile prestige TV dramas, and yet this is your first feature film. What took so long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, look, I grew up wanting to direct movies, but it's hard to get a movie away. It's a bigger budget. It's a bigger trust. Um, uh, then another thing happened, which is TV got cool, TV got hot. And honestly, some of the best and most inventive work was happening in television. Um, uh, so whether it was a Black Mirror or a Slow Horses, you were well resourced to tell very interesting stories with top actors. I worked with Helena Bonham Carter in 2009 on uh, a TV film for the BBC called Enid, That was just at the beginning of movie stars moving into television because the projects were interesting enough and we were telling things that weren't just a procedural drama. It's a roundabout way of telling you I got caught in television partly because it was a good, fun, creative place to be, but also because you need the opportunity. You need somebody to trust you, and Cecil Films finally trusted me to to do this.